G'day guys and welcome back to another video on my channel, Nintendo Down Under. Today we have the very rare Die Hawks N64, but it's not actually called this. And the story behind this console is very different to any other N64 color console. When you initially see this thing, oh yeah, they just made an orange and black variant, but that is not the case. The colors, the story has a lot of meaning behind it. And if you don't know the story, we're gonna get stuck into the unboxing, stuck into the story right now. So the story behind this console starts with a Japanese baseball team, but the story goes back even further than that. A Japanese called uh, a Japanese company called Dae bought a Japanese baseball team, and they called them the Dae Hawks. But before they were called the Dae Hawks, there was uh, they were bought and owned. Well, not bought. They were owned by a different Japanese company, a Japanese railway company. So they weren't called Dae Hawks. They were called. Uh, some other Japanese name Hawks, and then I think it was the early 90s, late 80s, Daihe bought this company and they became the Daihe Hawks. Now the Daihe Hawks ended up being a very successful baseball team. I think in 1999, 2000 and 2003, they won some baseball championship titles. To celebrate that, because Daihe was a company in Japan, they released and made the Die Hawks N64 console you see here. The baseball team's colors are black, but the Die uh, emblem is orange. And now, from I'm pretty sure confident, it's not called Die Hawks anymore because that Die store isn't around anymore. The name has changed, so the whole Die uh, company doesn't exist as it was known back then. But that's a really cool story considering the origins of it that it started out from a baseball team that was owned by a different company. This company, Japanese company called Dai, bought the company successful championships. To celebrate, they made this console. The team's colors black, the uh, company Dai symbols orange. Henceforth, henceforth, you see the Dai Hawks N64 console. So if you didn't know that story, um, yeah, I always find that one very, very fascinating. Uh, it's the second rarest color variant in the world behind the Just Go 30th Anniversary. The Just Go 30th Anniversary, again, um, is Japanese. Now, I, I need to clarify something as well. You've got two Pikachu Pokemon um, variants. You've got all these different color variants in Japan. You've got some special edition ones. Thinking Nintendo in Japan, the N64 must have been really successful in Japan. That's not the case at all, actually. The N64 wasn't as successful as it was, say, in North America or Europe or here in Australia. It did okay, but it didn't smash the market. So to have special editions from there makes it even cooler as well. And I think the coolest and best two variants in the world in terms of the Just Go and the Die, the limited edition ones, hard, hardly any to find. Um, they come from Japan as well. So yeah, if you didn't know that, you think, oh yeah, Japanese is Nintendo's Japanese owned. It must have been huge over there. Well, it actually wasn't as big as you think. But the colors of this, yes, we know of the orange from the dye and the black um, from the baseball team colors are very different to any other orange as well. So I've grabbed my Fire Orange N64 console. So when I open this box, that we can compare the colors because the orange that's here is very different to the orange that we have with our standard Fire Orange N64 consoles. And obviously this here is way more common. Um, it was sold worldwide, come in some special editions, come uh, in Australia here alone, you could buy this in different boxes in a couple of different ways. So there's much more common than say a Die Hawk. So if you've never seen the comparison, we'll do that now. The box, as I've stated before, Japanese box, my first ever Japanese box, I picked it up from the post office, I opened the packing box, and I noticed there was no back. I'm like, what's going on here? Like, should there be backs to these consoles? No. For some reason in Japan, there was no backs on the console, and their shape is very unique. I've compared it in other videos. If you haven't seen any of those videos, I'll do it quickly now. As we can see, it's a lot longer. Um, a lot longer, so I'll put that on top. Well, not a lot longer, but you know, decent enough longer. And if I put the uh, ice blue behind it, you can see on the side that it is taller as well. So a very unique shape compared to your standard colors 
um, that you can collect in different parts of the world. So we'll get this off and look, the condition of this box isn't mint, but it's not terrible either. A few little scratches on the front, um, the corners, maybe a little bit, of, little bit of damage and denting. Nothing too serious though, no big texture marks or rips. The colors are fine, no sun fading, uh, but I'm sure there are plenty of other Die Hawk consoles out there that are in much cleaner, better condition than this one. In terms of the foam inside, well, there's a tiny bit of damage and wear and tear. Uh, on the corners, a little bit jagged and rough. And just on the foam here, we can see there's a little bit missing there as well. Oh, disappointing, but that's okay. We live on. But in terms of everything that's inside this console, it is complete. We've got our N64 Japanese safety manual with all the different instructions. Oh, I can't speak Japanese or read Japanese, so I won't be able to translate any of that, but I'm sure it's just standard stuff that you would get if you bought any other N64 console in an area that you can read the language. We have the AV cables here. AV cables normally come in a blue packet, so this looks like a replacement packet from someone's uh, got a different baggie from something else and thrown it in there to make it look a bit more complete, but that is not official. If we go to our AV pack, the AV pack, we have it here complete and not, no damage. It's got the cable tie, cable tie could have been replaced. We don't have the baggie for this as well. We do though have the baggie for the console and the controller, which is probably more important than say the AV cable. But if I get this out, this looks beautiful. So that nice orange onto the back of this nice sort of Mac black look it looks really cool, an awesome looking controller. The stick is fine, buttons are okay, so it's not. It, it's in really decent condition. The console itself, well, the orange is different to the fire orange that we will compare in a second, but a lot of Diahawk oranges, they fade to this milky look, looking color where there's all these swells. And I'll show you exactly what I mean right now when I open it that some Diahawks over time sort of evolve and change, which is really strange and different. So if we get the console out here, beautiful by the way, that nice matte black bottom with that orange. But if you can see closely enough at the front of the console, you see you've got a bit of swell. There's a bit of swelling and that milky look of the orange that it just, a lot of these consoles over time, I don't know if the material's wrapped in something, it just does this. Some of these Diahawks don't have that problem, but mine has that sort of swell problem. And to be honest, I think it looks really cool. That, that marble look, it looks like something you see off a bowling ball or something. I think it is fantastic. I'll quickly move the foam out the way. And by the way, I said it's not called, it's always referred to as the Diahawks N64, but it's not, it's called Simply Die or Die 64. I'm not sure of the correct term there. I have seen some people call it to as Simply Die 64 or Die 64. So I, again, the origins of the story of the actual official name of the console are a little bit shaky, but some people are completely confident the way they call it and say, no, this is the way it should be called. But feel free to drop a comment down below and chime in on that. But he, here we can compare the two oranges. So this one here, that fire orange, there's no swirling right there. It's really bright, really fiery like it should be. And the Diahawk has that sort of marbly look. I promise you there's no sun damage here. It's just the way the console is. And if you put the two on top of each other, you can clearly see the differences as well. And to be honest, I think this console looks amazing, especially with that black bottom. The fire orange doesn't have that black bottom. And if I get the two controllers, and compare them. The dye orange just looks that little bit brighter as well. I think it's just because of that black back, that MAC black uh, back, and yeah, that nice fiery orange bottom of the usual one. Um, so yes, there's plenty of differences. They didn't just get the normal orange of a fire orange and chuck a black bottom on it. They tried to do a unique dye, and if I look closely at the box as well, you can sort of see that marbly white look on the dye hawk as well. Um, and I think it is a fantastic console. If you can manage to get your hands on one of these, then definitely do it. Um, there's a few floating around loose I've seen, but getting the box may be a little bit more tricky as the inflation of the world and things are rising, cost of living is, is rising up. It's probably getting a little bit more trickier to find these things, but in saying that, people might need some extra money, so they might be selling some things, so you might be able to find some bargains 
as well. So keep an eye out. But yeah, in the comments down below, let me know your thoughts on everything you heard today in terms of the story, how the Dire Hawk became to be. I think that's a really cool, unique story. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you've heard that story before. Or if you've got any other information that I might be missing today. I try and cover most things. When I'm doing these unboxings of these rare consoles, so they're documented on YouTube online, so people want to know more about consoles. I'm hoping they find these videos and they have their own research and knowledge on what they are, what they are worth, where I can find them, etc, etc. But please, I'm sure sometimes I'm always missing maybe a little bit of information. If I am, feel free to chock it, uh, chock it. Drop it in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and until next time, take care.